guys, it's Miss Casey from the STEM Lab at Bio Academy, and today we are going to talk about one of my favorite creatures. We're going to talk about the butterfly. So we're going to go over some really cool, interesting facts about butterflies, how they go from a caterpillar to a butterfly, so all the steps in between. So here I've got some really cool books about butterflies. Gail Gibbons is one of my favorite authors that does some really cool nonfiction books about a lot of different things, but her one on butterflies are is really great. Um, monarch butterflies are my favorite butterflies because they have a really cool story about how they migrate. So it's really interesting. So we have, I am a caterpillar. We have some born to be a butterfly. Of course, we have to include my favorite, Miss Frizzle. We have from caterpillar to butterfly. So we're talking about the transformation that they make. Butterflies and moss because there is a difference. Um, so we have butterflies here, which are some of our hello readers and those leveled readers. We have know-it-alls, butterflies, and then of course, I told you my favorite one is the Gil Gibbons one. For our book that we're going to read today, we're going to read From Caterpillar to Butterfly by Deborah Heldman. Today, a caterpillar came to school in a jar. It's eating green leaves. It's climbing and wiggling. The tiny caterpillar is going to change. It will change into a beautiful butterfly. Caterpillars usually turn into butterflies outdoors. They live in gardens and meadows and yards, but we will watch our caterpillar change into a butterfly right here in our classroom. This change is called a metamorphosis. Our caterpillar started out as a tiny egg. The mother butterfly laid the egg on a leaf. When the caterpillar hatched out of the egg, it was hungry. It ate its way out of its own eggshell. Then it started to eat green plants right away. A caterpillar's job is to eat and eat and eat, so it will grow and grow and grow. Each day when we come into school, we look at our caterpillar. Each day, it's bigger. Our skin grows with us, but a caterpillar's skin does not grow. When the caterpillar gets too big for its skin, the skin splits down the back. The caterpillar crawls right out of its skin. It has new skin underneath. This is called molting. Our caterpillar will molt four or five times. Can you think of another animal that molts its skin? Have you ever seen maybe snake skin in your yard or in the woods? So a snake molts its skin too. After many days, our caterpillars finish growing. It is much bigger than when it first came to school. It's almost as big as my little finger now. Our caterpillar is making a special house. First, it makes a button of silk. It uses this button to hang upside down from a twig. Then it molts for the last time. Instead of a new skin, this time there's a hard shell. This shell is called a chrysalis. Our caterpillar will stay inside the chrysalis for a long time. Every day, the chrysalis looks the same. We can't see anything happening, but inside the chrysalis, our caterpillar is changing. Will our caterpillar ever turn into a butterfly? Will it ever come out of its chrysalis? We can hardly wait, but we do. We wait and wait and wait. Then, one day during snack time, somebody shouts, look, and we all rush over there. The chrysalis is cracking. We see a head, a body, and then wings. It's a butterfly. The tiny caterpillar who came to school in a jar turned into a painted lady butterfly, and we saw it happen. Our butterfly is damp and crumpled. It hangs on the chrysalis while its wings flap, flap, flap. Blood pumps into its wings. The wings straighten out and dry. Soon our butterfly will be ready to fly. Our butterfly cannot stay in the jar. It needs to be outside with flowers and grass and trees and other butterflies. It is a warm spring day. I put my finger into the jar. The butterfly sits on my finger. I pull it out and our butterfly goes free. We feel a little sad and a little happy. We watch our butterfly land on a flower. It will sip the flower's nectar through a long, cool tube called a proboscis. Maybe it's a female butterfly. Maybe someday she will lay an egg on a leaf. I know just what will happen then. The egg will hatch into a caterpillar, and that caterpillar will turn into a beautiful butterfly. So, how many different kinds of butterflies can you find around your neighborhood? 
So we see, where I live, we see a lot of painted, but painted ladies, and we see some monarchs. So those are the two that I've really seen a lot of lately. So maybe you can find some of our cool butterflies in our book. So I told you that monarchs are my favorite butterflies. So I always think that they're like the queen of the butterflies, like the monarchy uh, over in Europe. So I do, I love monarch butterflies. At, at the beginning of Gail Gibbons' book, she goes through um, basically the life cycle of the caterpillar and how this turns into the um, monarch butterfly. So, but later on in her book, she talks about like the great migration that the monarch butterflies go on. And that's one of my favorite things about these butterflies. Um, I watched a really cool video at the Pink Palace one year, and um, I have always wanted to see the migration of the monarch butterflies. So they do a huge cross-country, cross-continent um, migration to this place in Mexico where they all migrate together, and it really is a beautiful sight. So maybe you and your parents could Google uh, the monarch migration, and you could see some really awesome pictures. So we're gonna go over the life cycle of a butterfly. So we're gonna start where our butterfly starts. So the butterfly starts as a tiny egg that's laid on a leaf. So I have a little thing here so you can see our little leaf and our little eggs that are laid on our leaf here. So we're gonna put this one right here at number one. So that's what's gotta happen first. So then we talked about in our book how the eggs start to hatch and the caterpillar starts to eat and eat and eat. So what book does that make you think of? I love that book, Eric Carle's The Very Hungry Caterpillar. So he eats and he eats and he eats to grow and grow and grow. So after the eggs hatch and the caterpillars come out, they start to eat and eat and eat. So we have our lovely caterpillars here. So this is actually what a monarch butterfly's caterpillar looks like. So we go from laying the um, eggs on a leaf and then we have our caterpillar here. So we'll put our caterpillar on the number two spot. So that comes after our Eggs are hatched, so then after they eat and they eat and eat and they grow and they grow and they grow. And so we also talked about how the caterpillar will molt its skin as it's growing. Like our skin grows with us and we do lose a little bit, but they have to shed out of their skin, okay? So we, um, I gave you an example of like a snake molt, so you can sometimes find some snake skin around. So after the caterpillar grows as big as it's gonna grow, they will start to make a cocoon or a chrysalis, okay? So they'll attach it to a leaf or a twig and that is like that hard shell. Sometimes you can see one um, if you're looking pretty closely. Or if you know you have like a butterfly bush or something like that, you might be able to see one. Um, I know that some of our second graders in Miss Lauren's class and Miss Walker's class got to witness their caterpillars make a cocoon or chrysalis. So that was really neat for them to be able to see. So after our caterpillar gets as big as it's going to get, it makes a cocoon or a chrysalis. Right? And so this is our next spot right here. So it spends a little time in its chrysalis or its cocoon, and that is when it goes through that transformation, that metamorphosis, and it turns into a beautiful butterfly. So that is how our butterfly comes about. So our last thing is our butterfly. So again, the eggs are laid on a leaf, and then they hatch out of their eggs, and they turn into caterpillars. Our caterpillars start to eat and eat and eat, and they grow as big as they can. Then they're gonna make their cocoon or their chrysalis. Okay, and then they're gonna go through that metamorphosis and they're gonna turn into a beautiful butterfly. In our other nonfiction book, Know It All Butterflies, it has a really great, great diagram of the different parts of our butterfly. So we have the three main parts of an insect, which are the head, the thorax, and the abdomen, and it has six legs. So here are our major parts of our butterfly. We have our head, our abdomen, and our thorax all kind of right here. And then we have our wings. So we have the diagram right here that tells it our four wings right here. And the hind wings are the ones down at the bottom. So kind of see the bigger at the top and the smaller at the bottom. So again, we have our head, our thorax, and our abdomen. And those are our three main parts of our butterfly. And its six legs are what put it in that insect category. In our book that we read, we talked about the proboscis, which the butterfly uses to eat. So it has this really long tongue that goes down into our flowers to drink the nectar. And so that is the food source that the butterflies need to survive. And um, here we have our antenna right here on the head of our butterfly. But again, I wanted you to see that proboscis, that really long, um, almost like a nose, it's like a straw that they use to drink the nectar from the flowers. Just wanna go over our life cycle one more time of our butterfly. So 
you'll remember that we start off with our eggs, our teeny tiny eggs, and then after they hatch out of the eggs, they become our little caterpillars, which hatch out of our eggs, and then they eat and eat and eat. So think about the very hungry caterpillar. They eat as much as they need to keep growing, and they turn into the bigger and bigger and bigger caterpillar. So, and again, remember that our caterpillars molt, so they don't grow with their skin, they have to shed out of their skin to keep getting bigger. So, when the caterpillar gets as big as it's gonna get, it builds itself a cocoon. So that chrysalis, where the metamorphosis happens as it changes from a caterpillar to a butterfly. So, for our STEM project today, we are going to create these lovely flapping butterflies. So, the only things that you're gonna need are two different size straws, I just looked in our junk drawer and we had some of these little bendy colored straws and then we had some plain clear ones. So look in your junk drawer to see if you have some old fast food ones or maybe in your mom's like party supply drawer she might have some different kind of straws. They do just need to be two different sizes because one of them needs to go inside the other. This is how we're going to get that flap in action for our butterfly. So just make sure you have two different sizes like a fast food straw and a milkshake straw or something like that. Okay, then you just need a pair of scissors, some tape, and some paper. And the paper is what you're going to make your butterfly out of. And once you make your butterfly, you may want to color it and decorate it any way you want to. So just have crayons and markers if you want to decorate your butterfly. So the first thing I want you to do is we are going to practice some symmetry, hopefully your art teacher. If you are not with our Miss Kay, your art teacher has taught you about some symmetry because I know Miss Kay has talked all about that. So what we are gonna do is we're gonna cut out a butterfly. So we wanna make sure we have a body for our butterfly because when we split our straws, they're gonna go through it. So we wanna make sure we have a butterfly body. Okay, and then we're gonna just cut out our wings. So I'm gonna have some nice big wings at the bottom. Okay, and then I can give us our top wings. And then I'm just gonna make sure I still have a little bit of that body at the top. Perfect. So when I open it, I have my butterfly right here. So my wings and my body. So now what I want you to do for us to put that small slit in the body part, just fold that in half. Okay. We're just going to add just a little small slit right there. So you can see our little slit. So we'll use that in just a second. Okay. So now I want you to take your two different size straws. And what we're going to do is we are going to cut just a little bit more off of our larger straw. So my clear one's my bigger one. I am just going to cut about a third of it off. All right, and so once I do that, we are going to split our larger straw down the side a little bit because this is what we're going to do to tape the um, tape on the bottom. And that's going to give us that flap in action. So very carefully, or you can ask somebody to help you. I want you just to split the straw. We're going to split it on each side. So kind of the bigger the split you have, the more action your butterfly wings will see. So I have just split my straw just like this, okay? So all I'm gonna do is I am just gonna tape it down right here, just like this on my butterfly. One piece of the straw per wing or per side. And I'll show you, tape stuck to my finger. Okay, so that's how I've got it right here. So I've got a piece of the straw taped to either side of my wing, okay? So again, I've just have it taped right there. Then we're gonna take our smaller straw right here. Okay, and all I'm gonna do here is I am just gonna split it on either side of this one too. So I'm gonna take a little split on that side and go right here on this side. Okay, let me see if I got it even. Pretty much. So all I'm gonna do right here is I am just going to go this way, slide it through my larger straw See if I can thread it there. There we go. I'm going to push it through to my larger straw, and it's going to go right through that split that we cut into the middle of our butterfly body. Okay, so I pulled it through. I have it right here. Okay, so now you're going to do here. We're going to do the same thing that we did on this side is tape a piece of the straw to either side. So I'm going to pull this across here and get my tape. Tape one side over here and the other side to the other wing. Okay, so now I have it all taped. So now all I have to do is I'm gonna slide it up and down. And now I have my flapping butterfly. So I think one side's longer than the other on mine, so mine's a little lopsided. But you can get that flapping action right that way, okay? 
So that's what I am going to challenge you to do today is to create your own flapping butterfly. I would love to see yours nice and decorated, maybe decorate it like your favorite butterfly. Again, mine's a monarch butterfly. And when we did our Ray Forest unit last year, we talked about the beautiful blue Morpho butterfly. So that would be a beautiful butterfly for you to do. So again, the only things you need to make our flapping butterfly are two straws, one a little bit larger and one a little bit smaller, scissors, tape, and a piece of paper. I can't wait to see your flapping butterflies.